Thanks for joining me today. We've got the One Series. The front brakes have got a little bit of judder and the brake pad warning lights come on. The pads are getting a bit low. Let's change them. Let's stick some new brake pads in this on it. First thing we're going to do with this is jack it up. We've got the jacking points either side. We're going to do it one side at a time. So I'll get my jack under there and uh, we'll get it up in the air. Don't forget though, we've got a locking wheel nut key on here. I'm using an impact gun so I can take the wheel off while it's in the air. If you're doing it on the deck, you need to crack these nuts off before we actually jack it up. These are quite low and I've got this Sealy low entry jack. It's brilliant for getting under these cars. I'll put links in the description for all the tools and all the parts we use in the video. See that goes under there and we've seen we've got clearance. It's fantastic. Pop the bonnet up as well, because we need to keep his eye on the brake fluid as we're contracting the piston in the caliper. So underneath this cover here, we just pull the tab back. There's a little clip at the front and one at the back that we need to release. That's the front one there. Just give that a little pull. And the same with the back one. And then that whole cover pops off. A bit tricky sometimes. There we go. And then we can see the brake fluid reservoir. We don't need to do that one, actually. Get that one back there where it needs to be. But we can see you've got maximum, minimum, and we're halfway at the minute. But as we push the piston back, it will force this fluid back up to the maximum level. So we should have enough in there. In the boot you'll find this little pouch, it's got the locking wheel nut key in it. We'll chuck that into the locking nut and whiz it off with a Milwaukee nut gun. Makes life so much easier that gun, it's amazing. You can see on the disc it's pretty corroded around the edge with a few chunks missing which could be why we've been getting the vibration. There's a bit of on the back lip, there's a bit of a rut there, I can feel it. The brake pads aren't crazy low. Whether the inside ones are worn a little bit more, we'll soon see. But yeah, let's whip them off. Now that we're in here, we can just have a quick look around. Things we're looking for, leaking shock absorber, is there any oil? This one's a little bit damp there, you can see. It will need replacing at some point. It's not really bad, but it's getting there. We've got the brake hose here. We're looking for any bulges, any tears in it, which it's not, there's no leaks, that looks fine. Got the ABS wire here that runs from the sensor on the top. And again, just check it, make sure it's not chafing or rubbing all the way back to the connector point there. We can look at this brake hose at the top as well, make sure there's nothing catching or bulging on this. And so this one looks fine. Any corrosion on the brake pipe, that again looks fine. We'll just turn the steering around. If we look closely at this caliper, we can see the markings on the back here, TRW. So this is a TRW brake caliper. It might make a difference if you're ordering your new pads and stuff, if, if they ask you what, what system it is. This is, it's a BMW, but it's made by TRW. So what we've got on here is a 13 mil nut on the end there. And on this inner bit there, I've got a, a 15 mil spanner. That slips onto the bolt. We can now get the ratchet and crack that one off. Where's that one out of the way? and now the caliper will swing. We should be able to just give it a little pull, just grab it, just pull it, get a bit of movement on it, and then this should slide up with a bit of lock. Depending on how stuck the, uh, the pads are in there. Here it comes, and there we go. We've now got a swing on this, and we need to check, make sure that it slides freely on its sliders. That one's okay. And that bottom one's okay as well. See how that moves about. If they're stiff, you can just pull them out, grease them, clean them, pull them back in. With that up there, we can now pop the pads out. We're just going to tap them right, give them a bit of a lever in, and they come out nice and easy. There's one. And you can actually see now that the wear on the discs a little bit there. Two. The other thing you've got now on these new pads, we get some new slider plates. So these 
plates here, we can just prise those down. And pop those off as well. We'll get the new ones on there. Same on the bottom. Get them out of the way. We'll give these a really good clean up where the sliders are gonna fit. All ready for reinsertion. Now the caliper itself, the piston, we're gonna to have to push that My back. favorite tool has always been the 20 inch water pump pliers. And we can just slide them over the back of the, the piston there and just gently squeeze that back. This is when we've got to check the tank and make sure that it doesn't overflow. I know I've got loads of room in there because we looked, didn't we? So I can just go with this side and then we'll recheck it. We don't want that to overflow up the top. But you see how that's going back nice and easy. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on this. So I know that this is as free as a bird. This piston is nice and loose, beautiful. So that's gone all the way back now, ready for its new set of pads. Now we need to take the caliper off because we're going to replace the disc. So we've got to take the two big bolts out the back. Let's drop that down and we'll have these two big bolts out, get this caliper out of the way. On the front of the disc, we've got one Allen key bolt there to remove, to free that off. Let's see how tight that one's going to be. Let's just pop that, make sure that goes right in. Oh, it's nice and easy, look. That's the locating bolt out. We need to keep hold of that. We need that for the reinsertion. Okay, now around the back here, we've got one bolt there and one bolt there. These two are going to bring the whole caliper bracket off. They're 18 millimeter bolts. Let's see if the gun will shift them. It should do. It shifts everything else. That's one loose. The top one's a bit more awkward to get out because we've got this in the way. So I'm off to get the bar on that and then the ratchet. Let's get that on there. See if we can crack that off. I used the bar on this rather than like a universal joint on the impact gun. You can see how tight the bolts are and the bar flexing. You can see how tight they are. Shows how good that Milwaukee gun is. Whip that off without any problem, doesn't it? And they're a little bit too much for the Milwaukee ratchet. Just be careful though when you're coming out a lot, you don't get your ratchet stuck on that bolt. rest that caliper in in the back there just so we're not straining this hose too much now this disc is rearing to come off like you can see it's here it comes look at the corrosion they're coming with this Oof. look at that lot in there wow so we need to make sure this surface is cleaned down nice otherwise if we've got any corrosion there the disc won't go on straight and you'll get some warp on when you're breaking got a bit of emery cloth there or i've got my little sanding <sighs> Wizard here, fantastic that. And we can just go across this and just get all those high spots off. We don't want to get too crazy, we don't want to damage the metal, we just want to get that corrosion off, that's all. That's ready to put its new disc on. Right, let's have a look in here and make sure we've got the right bits. So first we check the diameter, that looks right, which is a good start. And we get a new a little lock nut as well, which is good. These are lovely, They've got a nice coating on them as well, stuff from corroding in the packet. Yeah, they are nice quality, which is what you'd expect from Brembo. So we'll have this little lock bolt at the top there, the top bolt there, and then that can slide on, on like that. This little bolt go in to hold it in place while we rebuild get that back up where it 
things to eat. That's in place nicely. Then bring, brings us back round to the underside. We'll get this caliper off his little holder there where we had it and we need to slide this into place. What we can do with these big bolts, just got a bit of uh, aluminium grease there. We can just drop a little bit on the end of each one of those just to help it help it go on and get that up where it needs to be through the hole. That's one started there and then the top one if I can see it. Them two started. You can see now these have got a bit of grease on them, the, uh, the ratchet coats with them nicely. Then whizzes them in. Get them up nice and tight. I'll just finish them off with the bar, just give them a little, a little tweak. Spin that up again, out of the way. That's one. So these are pretty clean because they have those sliders on the top anyway, which protect it from the, the elements. Love that. Right, I've got these new brake pads. We're going to go for the Brembo option. We get the full pack of sliders in there. A couple of new lock nuts. We just push those into place like that. You don't need to worry about these sliders, they're all the same size. You just obviously put them in the right way around. Just make sure they go right up when we put them on. And they'll stop it squealing and stop the pads rattling about. Very nice. And these have got the backing on them as well to stop any squealing going on. You can put some uh, copper grease or some aluminium grease on these sliders if you want to. But to be fair for me, once you've got these clean sliders on there, I'm not too keen on doing it because the grit and dust sticks to the grease and ends up causing you more problems than if they're just nice and smooth. So I'm just going to go straight in with mine. They're going to be quite tight. We'll go bottom in first and then slide that in like that. One thing that you need to keep your eye on, the brake pads are different. This one with the higher, you see that that one's got a higher back on it than that one. The one with the higher back on it would be for the sensor. If this had it fitted to it, it'd be on the inside. The other side's got the sensor on it. So we still need to make sure though that we put this high back pad to the inner. and then we'll have this new bolt that we've got there to go in and it has got a little bit of Loctite on it you can see the red Loctite that'll stop it working loose and then like before we can whiz that back up again one side done pretty much we'll straighten that steering up and we'll have that wheel back on, let's move that out of the way. Well, 
what I will do now is just drop a small amount of the alu slip just on that center spigot there because they do like to get corrosion and the wheels stick to the uh, the hub but now that's there we'll drop the wheel back in nuts back on again I've got a little bit of slip on these I'll drop just a tiny bit more on beautiful you can see that pad is worn off the edge there where the corrosion on the disc has been causing a few issues and again on the inner lip there and when we look at this disc more closely you can see the amount of corrosion we've got and you see that mark there that's where it's sat parked up for a number of well probably a couple of weeks with some water that's got behind it and it's caused a layer of corrosion um, which is probably giving us a slight high spot on the disc and the chances are that is where his warp's been coming from. We've also got some chunks missing out. So again, that could also be an issue causing us warpage uh, and that horrible wobbling brake pedal. Hmm. We shall see. Now I'm bound to get some comments about using a, an axle stand on the car. I'm not going underneath it. I've jacked it up on the jacking point. I've got a really good jack. I'm not sticking any mere limbs underneath the car. So if it did drop, I'm not going to get squashed. So I'm not too fussy. If I was crawling under it, I'd always use an axle stand. But I do get quite a few comments about people going, you've not used an axle stand. That's why, because I'm not getting under it. So I'm not going to bother. Let's whiz around to the other side. We'll get the car down off the jack there. And do exactly the same. Put it under the jacking point and pop it in there. Just got to get this wheel off. Same again, locking wheel nut. And then uh, turn the steering so we've got some more room there. Now straight away on this side, took the wheel off, had a quick look, and I can see that the back here, we've got the sensor for the wear indicator inside, which we knew was on. Um, and the pad on that one is worn right down. For whatever reason, it's dead common on any car um, that the near side brakes wear quicker than the offside bizarre um there's been lots of theories into it dirt dust the distance between the pipes to the master cylinder and all that but generally this side always wears out quicker than the other side and that's why they put the wear sensor on the near side um we've got a new sensor that we bought so we can replace that because if we try to use this old sensor that light will stay on because it's a it's a, a broken track now it wears through the track which breaks it which brings the light on so you can't repair it if you want to be um or if you want to do away with this sensor you can join the wires together solder them together and then that sensor will never come on again and just tuck it away and tie it out of the way if you want to do that you know it's up to you but um we're going to replace it we're going to stick a new one on there this disc is well and truly i can feel it on the back this one is a lot worse than the other side let's whip this one apart and have a look a little nipple there we just pop the little nipple off and then the brake wear wire becomes loose gives us a bit of wiggle room can you see this one up here as well we just pop that one off of it out of the rubber there so now we've got plenty of play on this we can swing this one up like we did the other side just get my screwdriver in the bottom give it an open hand just lever it up that slider is nice and free that slider is nice and free so we've not got no seized sliders and then let's have this pad out of here and there you go now you can see when we were talking about the wear, there's the wear sensor and you can actually see how it's worn through 
the two tracks and we've got the two bits of metal exposed. That will just pull out of there if I've got uh, any strength about me. Let's see if I can do it with a screwdriver. Oh, there you go, look. It just unclips out of the pad. But look at that pad. That one is well down. We, we've took that right to the limit. I like to get my money's worth out of my brake pads. <laughs> it's not gone metal to metal, but it ain't far away. It ain't far, got about a millimetre. <laughs> This side is a completely different story. This one has got a bit more meat on it, but not as much as what the other side had. So we'll feed that, that wire out through the caliper and then we'll be ready to put the new one in. Let's get these slider plates out of the way. Get the screwdriver behind them and ping them out. That's the bottom one and then the top one. Do the same thing there. One's a bit tighter, but it's coming up. Here it comes. Oh, some corrosion there. Look at that one. <laughs> yes, definitely going to get a wheel wobble off that. We'll give this one a really good clean down as well. Get rid of all that corrosion on there so the new disc fits really nice and flush. New disc can go on now. We'll pop that out of the bag, get it on, locate it, it's nice and central, and whiz in the new bolt. So once we've put the bolt in, it's always nice just to spin it and look down the line of the disc and see if there's any movement, just to be sure that you've got it on central. If it's nice and true, you know you're good. Bit of grease on the bolts again, to hold the caliper on, we'll put them back in. And what we've got here is the universal impact joint on the Milwaukee impact gun which enables me now to get in and do these bolts up without using the ratchet and the bar saves a lot of time as you can imagine in a garage this is all that gets used um, saving on labor still charge the customer the same but it saves the mechanic a bit of time up nice and tight now we've got to squeeze back the piston on this side as well allowing for that space in the tank again which i know i've checked it we've got plenty there we'll just slowly 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 push this one back this one's obviously come out a bit further because then pads were a bit more worn down on this side slowly taking it back though see there it's not taking a lot of effort it's just nice and gentle pressure and then it goes back as it should so like I was saying about the wear sensor, which is here, this is a new one. Um, what we've got inside this little plastic thing on the back of the, uh, the inner wing is the connector plug. So that plug there will be behind this plastic casing. So at the bottom of it, we've got two little tabs that we just pop out and pop the little tab at the bottom there and pop the tab at the bottom there that lifts up and then it reveals the abs and the brake sensor wire so this brake sensor that we had here is fed round through these little rubber clips we just pop those little rubber clips out the plug itself just pops out of that just pops out of there like that that on the side so if we can prise it a little bit something's happening let's move the tad oh here we go it's out yeah that looks okay wires are still attached we can get rid of the old sensor now. So 
So the new one then goes behind the drop link, goes round up to our new connector there. There's a little recess in the bottom of this plug. And if you look down there, you can see the same recess. So that there is the bottom, that there is the bottom, and that's gonna go in like that and then push it all the way home. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, that's gone in nicely. And then we'll put it back into the the little at the back there. That can clip back into the in there I'm not sure that's all the way in and then we can drop down the flap and make sure the two clips on the bottom are in nicely and that comes around there we also get that one into the into the clip there like that and then this will come round and go into the brake pad so the little upside piece there is going to face towards the material side of the pad. So once that's there, we push that in, click it all the way into place, and then that pad is ready to go in to the caliper. And the bottom one. That's all in place and just gently guide that down there. We can close the caliper down, pop the bolt in and get that done up nice and tight. We've got this little uh, wire as well which needs to go back into its, into its holders, those little mounting points there. This one Again, we've got that little nipple cover that you just pull over and trap it, and that holds that in place. Straighten up the steering, ready for the wheel to go back on. Beautiful. Yeah, if we have a good look at this one, you can really see the corrosion on that, on the inner side. It's a bit of a state. Outer side don't look too bad, but the inner is really bad. And you can just make out that broken sensor. The two little bits that you see, the two like dots, that would have been joined up before it wore out. important thing we've got to do now is pump the brake pedal make sure that it goes firm before we start to drive the car a few little jabs that's pushing that piston back out again on each of the calipers filling it back up with fluid then we can have a look at the fluid reservoir and like i said the fluid has pushed its way all the way back up to the maximum i've not topped that up that is all about what's come back up from those pistons we'll screw that lid back down again that back on there we go I've got it well I hope you've enjoyed that video brake pads and discs all changed sensors replaced everything's absolutely spot on if it's been a use drop me a little thumbs up like and subscribe thanks for watching <sighs>